Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels, and yes, we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do, the usual disclaimers. First off, you are going to see the link to the article, also known as the stupid. We're getting ready to read right there in the description box alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject and the templates. Folks, you know the drill. Sign your name, click on your senator. And the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Now, trigger warning on two fronts. First off, this is for JRC support, so you are going to see some stupid. Also, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you've got young children present, please use your headphones, all right? Now, all of these folks are relatively recent, if you've noticed not too long after the D.C. Circuit Court revoked the ban on the GED devices and allows the torture to continue. So we're going to get into it. The first is 515. And I did amazing today at work. But yeah. Jersey makes me cranky and angry, all right? So if I stumble over my words... Apologies in advance, okay? Okay, cool. Moving on. So this is coming to us from the Sun Chronicle. It says, See Kunk family advocating for Shawnee's bill and fight for education equity for students with autism. Sounds benign. Right? Let's see. Oh, we got the tiny type and 10 million pop-ups we don't need. After years of different program placements for severe autism, there we go, folks. We're going to start with functioning levels. That's always the first sign that this is going to be a whole bunch of stupid. Functioning levels don't really work. They actively stigmatize across the board and also allow for agencies to deny people with quote-unquote high-functioning services. Or they can kick us out, you know, like they did to me in my 20s. That went well. Not. But moving on. Shawnee, forgive me if I butcher this, a Halatko Center, seen here with his parents, Shane and Cheryl Halatko, of Seekunk in 2020, just before the pandemic struck, has found a suitable program. Now Shane and Cheryl are advocating for Shawnee's bill, or HD-358, which would ensure timely placement of a child in a residential program, an emergency fund for the placement and give authority to the parents as to which facility their child will attend. There's a lot of problems I want to unpack on this. This all sounds benign, right? Reasonable. Lovely, even. But when we're talking about placing your kid in the JRC, which we both all fucking know that's what's coming up, we need to think about this a little bit. Parents don't always have their child's best at heart. Let's face it, we deal with abusive parents every year, including parents who kill their autistic children. You know what I mean? Also, parents are never given all the information of what goes on behind closed doors at the JRC. Ill-informed parents Making decisions on placement when they're not given all the information, it's a scary thing. There should be laws where everything is exposed, but hopefully we shall see here. I feel that parents should have a say, Shane Helgotcher said. It takes an emotional and physical financial toll. It drains you. I didn't realize this was going where it was going. 
but after 400 instant reports for Shawnee alone, I realized I have to do something. You're going to note another thing here. I'm going to point it out because I'm going to be pointing it out as the curing goes throughout. None of these people, none of them, ever talk about the child having a say in their own placement considering they're the ones who are going to be stuck in a particular place, taken out of their communities and away from their families. Shouldn't the child, who's going to be the ones put in the program, have a say as to where they are being placed? Oh, but Tiffany, they're autistic. They don't understand. They're not like you. They can't even tie their own shoes. How dare you say that they need to make their own decisions? They can't do that. I do that. I'm at their voice. It's the most egotistical, horrific thing these parents say, and they do it time and a fucking again. These parents think because their kid is nonverbal, because they are, quote unquote, display more classic autism. That we have no idea what the hell we're talking about. And they are the ultimate make or break deal. But these parents are so highly uninformed and so prejudiced when it comes to autism and autistic advocates due to the medical fucking model and their ABA bullshit that they've been putting down their throats since their kid folks got the label. That, yeah, there is literal animosity there. I've been trying to build a bridge between the two communities for years, but you have those parents that absolutely refuse to hear anything about change or hear anything about their child having any input whatsoever about their own lives. They don't want to hear about devices and reasonable accommodations in order to Provide that child a voice. I've dealt with it face to face in my office, folks. But let's go ahead and move on here. Shawnee Halatko lasted about a year and a half in the public school system. This is one of the main things the JRC is going to throw out, folks, and I need you to be prepared for it. The fact of the matter is... Public school systems, special education programs are majorly underfunded, nor are people quite properly trained when knowing how to deal with any neurodiverse kid, let alone autism. The way schools treat ADH kids is its own goddamn subject. It's disturbing as hell. But we'll get into that another day. Most of these parents, what happens? They say they try everything. I want to tell you what that actually means. Because believe me, I've heard this story. They mean the school system, folks. They mean the school system. And the school system, let's face it, the people within it, due to lack of funding, do not get adequate training when it comes to autism, period. 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 They don't. They don't know how to handle quote unquote behaviors. They don't know how to anticipate when one of us might need a reasonable accommodation. They don't even know or have the time to figure out what's triggering the behaviors. You see what I mean? Lack of trading, lack of the time and the capability of all the other students in the class to be able to determine what's triggering the behaviors and provide the reasonable accommodations so that the behaviors will stop. Yeah, so they haven't actually tried everything. They'll tell you that. And they're going to tell you that their kid is uncontrollable. 
but with the right resources and the right circle of support, I have seen the quote unquote most severe be able to thrive. I've seen it. But moving on. At just five years old, Shawnee had already been hospitalized for eating hazardous objects like light bulbs and tacks. It was becoming violent at home, unable to regulate his own behavior. And here we go. This is what we call victim blaming, folks. And it is prevalent throughout our community because it happens to us constantly. I think I'm so... Yeah, we'll get into that. They're talking about a thing called pica. Pica is something that some autistics had. Even I had it as a little, when I was little. When we will put inappropriate objects in our mouths. For me, it was always pennies. It had to be copper. And I can tell you because I remember why I would do it. Because it would assist me in dealing with being overwhelmed by the sensory around me. If I was overcrowded by people, if there were too many smells, too many colors, too many sounds, and regular stimming was just not working, for whatever reason that I can't even explain to this day, not even chewing or eating it, just sitting a copper penny in my mouth and just letting it sit there, and that metallic copper taste would calm my ass down. It was a form of self-regulation for me. Which, I'm sorry folks, that's pica. I'm explaining it to you from an autistic perspective. Some of these objects are hazardous. I have heard about light bulbs and glass marbles, things that could particularly might cause damage. So yes, pica is a thing that needs to be dealt with. And the best way to do it, what's triggering the pica? Why are we self-regulating in that manner? Why are we seeking light bulbs and tacks and copper? And provide reasonable accommodation. It's really that simple. It's really that logical. Again, talking about violence, they're violent, unable to regulate their own behavior. No, we cannot. This is why we need reasonable accommodations, not torture. When you are unable to communicate, and no one is assisting you in any way to be able to communicate to the people around you what's wrong. And you keep getting frustrated because people keep demanding things of you and you can't even explain why you can't do them. You get a little angry. Meltdowns are bound to happen. Especially when it comes to people like ABA, especially in fucking school systems, where they're trying to force you to not be you and completely ignore that you're being triggered by the sensory issues in the people around you. But moving on. Shane and Cheryl Hakatro met with school officials to ensure that they could handle Shawnee's behavior, keeping both him and others safe. They said they were that they weren't seeing the same child his parents described seeing at home. Uh, here's where the JRC comes in. But then they did. On his last day in public school in October 2007, Shawnee urinated and speared his smeces across the entire school hallway during a moment of distress. Sensory overload. It was an act of self-defense, Shane Hakajo said in an interview. By also covering himself in feces, Shawnee figured nobody would restrain him. In other words, he's fucking scared, folks. 
Restraining is one of the most horrific things that people with autism have continuously gone through for years. Imagine being us for a moment. Let's step out of our uh, neurotypical, you're me. Okay, you're me. And you are surrounded by fluorescent lighting, which you can hear constantly, constantly, constantly. Like nails down a chalkboard everywhere you go. You're surrounded by bright colors, so much that they cause you physical pain. There's construction going on inside the school, and that sound is so bad that it's literally causing you to break out in hives. Now, I want you to also imagine that this going on for hours on end, and you are unable to communicate the distress that building, building, building all day is causing you. And people keep demanding things of you. Do your work. Do this. Do that. Do this. Why aren't you interacting with the other children? Why are you being weird? Yeah. Yeah. And then when you finally get frustrated and you start acting out, here comes this big fucking adult teacher who's suddenly full body restraining you. No one during that time sought for reasonable accommodation, asked why, but because you're acting out, because you won't stop it, because they won't listen, or you can't communicate it, you can see where this can go downhill, right? Good. Imagine all that going on, and then you have this big, hulking adult suddenly full body restrain you. Yeah, you're going to go to extreme measures to not have to endure that. Yes? That's logical response, right? These so-called behaviors are not insane as you seem, as they seem, if you take yourself out of the neurotypical bubble and step into one of our heads for a moment. But moving on. Shawnee had just been hospitalized for self-injurious behaviors at home. During hospitalization, his parents had another individual education plan meeting with school officials to once again express doubt that public school was the right fit for Shawnee. Now the school agreed it wasn't. Again, I will say this. They are overwhelmed. They are not properly trained. The list goes on of all the ills of public schooling for one of us. Self-injurious behaviors, believe it or not, we're not trying to hurt ourselves. It is an extreme version of self-regulation. That is when the frustration is beyond. This is near meltdown rate, folks. We do self-harm in meltdowns, but it's not intentional. But sometimes we do self-harm to try to prevent ourselves from going into meltdown. I remember this distinctly from childhood, when I would try to restrain myself from going into meltdown by digging my nails across my arms or digging them into my hands. See where I'm going with that? Good. Again, something is wrong. And again, instead of appealing to logic, finding out what's wrong and providing the ensuing reasonable accommodation, we blame the child and say they need to be stuck in a place. But moving on. He was transferred to a collaborative school for children with low incidence disabilities, even though the Halkajos favored a residential program where he felt he could receive proper medical attention and education from staff trained to manage severe cognitive disabilities. Again, this whole thing 
We're not training our parents properly either, folks. Not by and large. There are a lot of things that would not cost them nearly as much as sending them to a place to be tortured like the JRC. Reasonable accommodations that could be provided that we are not teaching these parents. It's sad. Moving on. The collaborative school claimed they had seen it all, Shana Kaja said. But within the first year, Shani was restrained 60 times, with one day resulting in 10 incidents. Gee, you think? Considering they... So you took a kid who was having extreme sensory issues. No ability to communicate it to anyone. Already terrified of being restrained. You send them to the Judge Rotenberg Center. And you're surprised when the incidents go up, not down? They asked Count Kajo to be available during school hours. On several occasions, Shawnee was escorted out of the building, restrained in a sleeping bag. Holy fucking shit. Could you imagine how terrifying that would be? He was discharged from the school two years later. As he started to get bigger and stronger, his behaviors became harder to manage. Again, we're putting this kid through years of this shit, and nobody is still trying to find out what's causing the behaviors. You can't just blame autism for everything, folks. You gotta dig in. What's causing it? What can I do to help accommodate them to help them self-regulate better? This was repeated for nearly 10 years. Shawnee would be admitted to a program and discharged just a few years later after dozens of incident reports. And the colleges would be under pressure to find a new program that would admit him on short notice. It took six years before public school officials even approved residential placement and another five years to find the right fit because the family didn't have any say in the matter. All throughout, Shoni was in and out of the hospital with behavioral flare-ups not receiving the educational rights he's entitled to by law. In 2017, Shoni was accepted to the Judge Rotenberg Center in Canton, where his parents say he has thrived. Has he? Parents like, but his behaviors all stopped. Tell me. Is it worth him... Hating his life. Are you so concentrated on making him normal instead of finding reasonable accommodations that you are willing for him to be sleep deprived, starved, and tortured on a four point board by a shock just below the lethal limit just so he can be in a catatonic state because that's what's happening. But moving on. He's finally receiving an education, a subpar education. You ever look at the New York State report? You should. He's off medication for used for a decade to try and subdue him. Again, we're making medication the boogeyman. In his four years at the program, there have been no elopements, no hospitalization, or no calls for police assistance, frequent occurrences in the decade prior. You see where the problem is, right? They say they try everything, but they don't. They tried the school system. The school system who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, who has no adequate training when it comes to autism or anybody else neurodiverse for that matter, just basically throwing him at places to see what would stick. You think that's not traumatizing? Imagine... You know people autistic, we, we resist change. I became good with it later, but what can I say? I'm a strange animal even amongst my kind. Imagine that much rapid change constantly. Constant change in sensory. Constant moving place to place. Removed from your family. You know, and then you get stuck in this hell. But your parents are happy because you are so fucking catatonic that, yeah. 
At 20, Shawnee now visits home on weekends, where he loves swimming, shopping, and dancing to kids' bop music with his sister, Olivia, and brother, Shane Jr. He knows the order of every track on every album and will tell you if he thinks some song is too inappropriate for the brand that produces family-friendly covers of popular pop songs. Yeah, that's an autistic trait, folks. We already did that shit. He is easily lovable and wrapped you in a big hug, Hikacho said. Are you saying that he wasn't lovable before? Now, finally feeling secure in Shawnee's placement, the family is advocating for changes to the Massachusetts law that they say will protect both families and some of the Commonwealth's most vulnerable constituents. Shawnee's bill, or HD 358, would guarantee residential placement for children with intellectual disabilities within 30 days of approval. The bill, sponsored by State Rep. Stephen Howitt, Republican, why am I not fucking surprised, creates an emergency fund for a timely placement and gives final authority to parents to which facility their child will attend. Parents who are not properly chained, who do not know what goes on behind the closed doors of that place, who have never gone to programs. Remember, they said all this shit about Jennifer Masamba too. Look at how she's done since she's been out of there. She has a thriving YouTube channel, folks. You should see it. You know what I'm saying? But no one ever talks about her. Moving on. The bill has shuffled through three legislative sessions without coming up for a vote, but how Kaljo and how it hope this year it will get the recognition it deserves. The length of the time they took, that delay hurt Shawnee, how Kaljo said. And when we finally got a green light, we got little to no input. I feel the parents should have a say. It took an emotional, physical, and financial toll. If it drains you. I didn't realize this was going where it was going. But after some 400 incident reports for Shawnee alone, I realized I had to do something. How it said the bill will help families and children who don't know where else to go. I would recommend not going to the JRC. I would recommend talking to advocates who have helped build programs and systems to assist and train parents on how better to help their kids so they do not put them in hell holes like the JRC. Folks, I am not taking lightly your situations. Remember, I have worked in the field. I do not take a parent situation lightly at all. But you cannot take a school at face value or even the kids, quote unquote, improve behavior because you may not always know what's going on behind it. Cheryl McCollum thought that once, too, until she found out what happened to her son. It seems like people who fall through between the cracks are because other people are not fully understanding what the issues are. This brights the light and bring it forward to the next section. But the parent isn't refusing to understand it's like this block in their heads you can like hammer and hammer and hammer and try to get them to listen but they just won't they just won't they'll tell you my kids not like you they cannot talk i'm their voice i'm the parent i know best and that kind of mentality is how you end up with an andre mccollins situation all right, I'm going to go ahead and close out on that, even though the article does go on here. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this topic. And the few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. Do appreciate your time this afternoon. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.